Okay. All right. So really important thing to capture here is when we start this up, you're going to want to choose ActionScript 3.0 when you create new because um, what, we're, what we're required to do in this class is ActionScript um, animations. So I'll show you how ActionScript works. It's really, it kind of writes itself. Um, and if you, it gives you even tips on how to edit it itself and everything. It's just a code um, that, that uh, provides interactivity to elements um, on the uh, canvas. So the first thing you would do um, is actually just save this. Um, so I'll go save as here. Now this is going to save as an FLA document. They call it an animate document. The FLA um, came from when this was called Flash at one point. So they still call it an FLA file and uh, um, uh, that's what it continues to be. So I'll just do um, uh, interface. So really my purpose here is just to show you kind of the interface and where to find some of the main things that we're going to um, look for in this. Then I'll um, uh, show you a file that has um, a lot of elements really built out here um, and then we'll uh, let you go on break. So one of the things you'll notice is that these tools are on the opposite side of where they are normally for other software. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, so you have your pen tools and lasso tools. So what's interesting is that this is maybe a mixture of um, uh, Illustrator and Photoshop more than anything. It also has a little bit of InDesign in Concept 2 because you have the library um, aspect as well where you can import content into your library and then drag those elements out and use them in a design. So um, JPEGs, PNG files, etc. Um, you can even bring in uh, Photoshop documents, different layers. You can bring in uh, individual layers of Photoshop documents or individual layers of, uh, uh, of uh, Illustrator files and that type of thing. Um, one of the um, first things that someone would do in here is actually go into the Properties panel. Um, and, uh, well, actually, you would have to click on your selection tool and what the properties panel does is it changes depending on what tool you have. So I had the pen tool selected and when the pen tool was selected my properties panel actually gave me some more um, uh, more options uh, here than what I had with my selection tool. So if I select my selection tool the properties change. So the properties palette really is a very flexible and um, a very dynamic menu in here. It's something that's used very often, but here you can actually um, uh, define how many frames per second you have. So it looks like uh, now animate uh, defaults at 24. Um, so something like this, I'd bring it down to like 18 or maybe 16 or something like that just for now. Um, so why would you want it less frames per second rather than more? Well, because Yes, and then also what comes into play is file size too. So like some, um, any, any websites that uh, uh, use animated uh, advertisements like this, which I've still seen some on some of the major websites, which, which is interesting, but um, they'll give you certain uh, scope of how big the files can be on their sites. Because the bigger a file, the, the, the uh, slower the loading time on a website like, let's say it's like Forbes or something like that. Some kind of website that, that is an advertiser, right? Or uh, is a place for advertisers. Then they would say, your file size needs to be a certain amount. And then if you built your file at, you know, let's say 18 frames per second and your client was happy with it. Um, and then you exported it and it was too, a little too big, you would... First thing you would do is reduce the frame rate on the on the uh, video to see what that did to the overall to the overall um, uh, file size. Um, okay, so just something to keep in mind. Here, what you can do is actually lock the width and height values together in the size of your panel. So, um, uh, if I wanted to lock the aspect ratio, I would click the lock. If I didn't, I would just click, you know. Uh, to unlock it and then and then change that um, the the size of that. So the canvas is going to change 
size according to uh, what I'm typing there. So I do a 500 by 500. That's um, what I have the assignment parameters at. If you want to do a different size, like something like longer, like a banner, or taller, like a skyscraper, um, you can. Um, the first thing I would do if I wanted to get a different um, size object is I would go to uh, Google and just say um, uh, web ad sizes. And then you can get a very common uh, array of different um, uh, standard web sizes and stuff that's out there. There's tons out there. I mean, it, you can basically make any, any size for a web page, but most advertisers have these standard sizes um, that you have to abide by in order to create an ad for them and so on. Okay. Um, you know, here I can I can define like a, a background color for my pasteboard and so on and so forth. Typically, I'll just use it at, at white, and then I'll just uh, uh, move on from there because really I can just create a new layer um, to define a background. So if I wanted to use an image for a background, I would just create a layer and then just uh, and then just build that. So um, let's just say, for instance. Um, uh, you know, you wanted to uh, change the name of a layer, um, just double click it and then just call it whatever you want, background, okay. Um, let's see, I'll actually put an object on this. So um, down here, you can see there's like a very, I'm going to actually add a, a frame here so you can see a little better. So I inserted a frame here, so I just did that by going control click and then I hit insert frame. So this actually put a frame here at frame 21, okay? This is my playhead. I'm just clicking and dragging it along. And so this number down here is going to change based on where the, um, the playhead is, right? So um, it's going to tell you exactly what frame you're on, which is nice. Um, there. So um, there will be times when you'll need that. So if you'll, if you'll say, if you want to say, um, hey, I want this button to go to this exact frame. Um, you could use the playhead to, to figure out what frame you're actually looking for. So this circle here is actually hollow on frame one. This means that there, um, it's a blank keyframe. So it's waiting for a piece of art to go on the canvas board, okay? So what I'm gonna do is click on that frame and then I'm going to uh, take this rectangle tool and under properties, I'm going to um, basically choose uh, my fill and stroke. So again, that properties palette is dynamic um, and it's gonna change just based on what um, uh, I have selected in my toolbar. So I'm going to, uh, let's see, give it a zero, like no stroke. So that's over up here on the upper right. So I'll click that. And then the fill, I'll just choose one of their colors that they have. I can actually even type whatever web safe color I wanted to as well here, okay. So maybe it's like round uh, 2E, 2E73. So it's blue. Um, so then I'll just draw the shape, right? And then and then I can actually um, uh, hold this and move it around and make it a rectangle or you can hold shift just like an illustrator and constrain the proportions to make it a perfect square. So I hold shift and I made it a perfect square at that point. I'm gonna hide that. Now, now you can see on the bottom here that this circle is actually filled in. So I know that this frame has a piece of artwork, okay, on the, on, so it's got something on the layer. There's a background there. There's a piece of art on the layer. Now this piece of art, as I'm moving the playhead in time to frame 21, that piece of art is visible and is present up until frame 21 here. I can see that all the way through, okay? So that's, that'll be important. So let me um, first off create a new layer. And I'm gonna add a frame over here to frame 30. So I'm gonna control click and then insert frame. So here's where it gets interesting. So now my layer two goes all the way to frame 30, but now background layer one is going all the way up until 21, right? So my playhead only goes as far as how many frames I have in, in the timeline. So this is why you're seeing this disappears, you know, is because the artwork ends here. 
21. Now if I wanted this artwork to change on frame, you know, let's say 22, I'm going to click on frame 22 on this background layer and I'm going to hit control click and I'm going to hit insert keyframe. So what that's doing is creating another keyframe here that is an exact copy of the keyframe before it. All right. So let me delete layer two real quick. I'm just going to illustrate um, the kind of animation that gives you the least control in this program is the shape tween. Okay. So in order, just like in our um, uh, kind of talk there, we didn't. We needed to have a beginning and an end to find in our timeline to create an animation. You have to have a starting and an ending point. So um, for this second keyframe here, my ending point, I'm going to actually click it. And you see how this kind of turns into like this checkered sort of mass? This is an interesting um, quality in all drawing elements in Animate, is that it almost acts like what I describe as like a clay. So you can kind of click and drag over this, and it's almost like a, a piece of uh, raster art that I can like even delete like that piece of it. So it's almost like anything I select here is almost like me using a marquee tool and then just deleting it like I would in Photoshop. But now if I select my direct selection tool, or they call it a sub-selection tool, it's the same keyboard shortcut, it's the letter A, I can click that and then go over my object and you can see points and paths were created you know, on this object, which is interesting. So it's, it's definitely a mix of both um, uh, uh, animate, or I'm sorry, uh, Illustrator and Photoshop in that regard. So what I'm going to do is actually select this object and I'm going to uh, see if I can just change the color of it. So I'm going to double click it with the selection tool and then uh, I'm going to change the color okay, to something obvious. And then here's my beginning so frames 1 through 21 is that regular box, and then 22 is that, okay. So I want to use a shape tween. The shape tween is used um, uh, only, you can only use a shape tween with this type of art on the canvas, this, this natively drawn anime art um, is the only way you can use a shape tween. So to create a shape tween, or any tween for that matter, um, Shape tween specifically, because you have to do a couple more steps if you want to do a classic tween, is what they call it, and we'll go over those uh, next time. Um, but what I would do is control click that middle point between those two keyframes, and then I would just select create shape tween. You can see motion and classic here too, but shape tween is that. So I created the shape tween. Now you can see the arrow, so that shape tween actually is is right because I have an arrow that's going from one keyframe to the other. And you literally have no control over what this is going to do. You can only just hope that it's going to turn out the way you want it to. So if I hit the space bar, or I'm sorry, the enter key or return, that's, that's literally my animation. And it's literally like the computer just defines whatever it thinks you're wanting to do, okay? With a shape tween, you have zero control over it, which, I don't know, sometimes it can be interesting, but usually it's not something you want, because I like a little more control, but some people maybe, you know, some people might think it's interesting. So, now you can see the color is changing. So, it's this tween is actually making it so that every step of color change between that dark blue and this bright lime green is, is actually happening, just, it's just automatically doing it, okay? So, you know, it's, um, you know, normally in the days of like probably Walt Disney, right, they would have like each individual, you know, movement of the character, you know, until he did something or he or she did something, right? Um, uh, so this is kind of that, uh, uh, the same idea, but it's just a more automated way. 
And then finally, um, I could take this keyframe and then click, hold, and drag to like frame 100. And now you can see that the tween actually, it's actually spreading out the steps from beginning to end. So now it's a lot slower. So I added more uh, frames in the animation, creating a longer video. So this is what is it frame 100 on the money and how many frames per second is this 18 so it's probably about a little under five seconds something like that sorry ah yes so it kind of says it already right. I didn't have to do math so there you go <laughs> does that make sense so far to everybody where, uh, y this is pretty much the only time I'll, I'll really show you the shape tween. It's just really basic. And just because you don't really have control over it, I mean, you can use stuff, you can do stuff with it. Like, I can lock this up, and if I wanted this to just play in my background constantly, and I wanted to work on other things, right, um, I can, you know, you know, select things, drag it around, move it, and stuff like that without bothering that background. If I wanted that background to be static and always there, uh, then I could. Now let me just show you one more thing really quick, and that is to um, export um, the movie. So I have my, um, and let me save this first. So I'm going to go File, Save. I have my FLA file. That's my working file. I'm going to go to File, Export, and then I'm going to Export Movie. And then here, I'm, it's going to default me to that SWF file. So I'm going to save it to my desktop. OK. And then I'm going to close it out, jump to my SWF file here in the desktop. Now, that's, this is that working file. This is that you know, print-ready PDF equivalent of like a digital uh, uh, interactive animate file. Now what you'll notice is that an animate file or an SWF file or an FLA file, what have you, everything that's created or animate is on a constant loop. So it will play from the beginning to the end back to the beginning. It's a constant loop. If you wanted this to stop at any certain point or at the end, hence that interactivity piece, right? You can make it stop or go or play for any frame you want. You would have to use ActionScript to say, stop at this frame, all right? So if I wanted this to stop at the end and then if someone clicked on it to replay the movie, I would make it stop at frame 100. I would uh, make this object a button on click. On the click, it would go to frame one and play all the way to frame 100 again to stop again and then click to go back. Yeah. Oh, shift back to the beginning? Let me see. It's theoretically, yes. So what I would do, oh. Why is my object? Can you just call yeah. So what I would do is I would unlock this. I would select this and copy. And then I would go down to, let's say, frame 150. And then I would go control click insert keyframe. Now it's going to copy the same art from frame 100, right? Now this keyframe, I want it to be different, so I'm going to Command A to select all and delete. And I'm going to go to Edit, Paste in Place, paste my frame. So now, between this point, 100 and 150, I want to create the um, shape tween. So yeah, we got lucky that time. So it goes all the way. And then if I were to export the SWF, uh, export movie to an SWF on my desktop, save, replace. I'll do a save here. I'll go back, open this up. 
It's a really long for the animation, but so it's kind of pulsating, which is interesting. I don't know. I kind of like it. So yeah. But this is the, the, the essential concept to how everything else 